Hey everyone, so one of the top questions I get asked is how I create my cartoon lenses. If you know me on Snapchat, you know I love creating cartoon characters. It's been one of the things that I've been striving to do since the day I started making lenses. I have, I think, over 100 lenses on Snapchat and a lot of them are cartoons. I use many of the tools right in Snapchat that are really easy to use, like the face morphing template, makeup, and I layer with post effects and all kinds of stuff on top of that. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the face morph template and how to work through it to create character looks. And this is going to give you the base for understanding how I created lenses like my Bratz doll, my uh, Grinch baddie character, my avatar lens, and my Zepito character, and many of the other lenses that you've seen on my profile. So my lenses to date, especially my cartoon ones, have gotten billions of impressions on Snapchat with my Brad's effect, I think generating something close to 4 billion impressions and over 100 million shares. So these effects have done very well in Snapchat and they've led me to get countless amounts of exposure. I've been featured in articles as well as gotten a lot of amazing clients. I've even gotten the chance to work with Bratz on a campaign. So I've had an amazing time creating cartoon effects and not only has it been something that's helped me grow as a brand, but it's also been something that's just fun that I just love to create. So I hope that this helps teach how I've done what I've done in, the, um, in lenses like that in the past. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in a comment below. All right. So one of the biggest questions I get asked when it comes to making filters is how I created my Brat style effect, how I create my cartoon character effects. Well, I always start with the face morph template. That's an amazing template right inside Lens Studio that allows you to create dramatic character transformations just with a very simple template. And so when I open it up, you'll see exactly what I mean when I say it's a pretty simple template to work with. And now when this file opens up, we'll see that there are three different options within this project file. There is a character example, a simple face mesh, and a face mesh example that has face morphing within the program. So first we have this character right here. And right now it's set to have a tween on. It actually goes from zero to full and it turns you completely into a character. I don't really know how to describe it, but yeah, it's pretty wild. But sometimes within this project, I actually like to just use the eyes. So the eyes in this filter are amazing. Like these are great cartoon character eyes. So if you're creating your own characters on top, just like this little cat kind of creature thing, you could use those eyes as a great 3D eye to go underneath. It has great HDRI uh, textures on the eyes um, that give you an environment look and also just really cool and really well done tracking. So I'm just going to actually turn that one off for now. And you'll see that there are two other projects here, the face mesh example and the simple one. Turning on the simple one, you'll see it's a cube. And so you could actually adjust this and you could swap this out for like a sphere, for um, a face morph, whatever you want. Um, it's an amazing thing that you could take your face and basically just like project it onto anything like that. Now going into this one, You'll see that this face mesh here, if you click on this little arrow here, you could drop it down and click on head binding and you'll see the square that says face mesh, edit blend shape. By clicking on that, you'll see that this is the uh, face mesh um, adjusters right here. You could adjust this to change your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and do some really fun things right already within this template. So you don't even need to make your own face morph. You could actually just work with this and create some really interesting looking character looks. So if we wanna adjust and create our own custom face deformation, what we could do is go into Blender and open up the face mesh asset from that Lens Studio website. So if you don't know, uh, if you don't have this yet, I have in my project file, you could see that there is this face mesh reference file. It's like a face mesh object file. And I also have some textures that go along with it, but we'll just need the face morph, morph uh, face mesh for now when creating our own face morph. So going into Blender, just open up that project or open up that file and you should see the face here. So if your view is all over the place or you're somewhere sporadic like that, just go up to view and go to viewport and click front. Make sure you're inside sculpting and you could always go back to view and change your viewport to front at any time if you get lost or it gets some go somewhere else where it's not supposed to go like that. You could, I always bring it back to front. There we go. And now I like to turn on symmetry so that whatever I do on one side will happen on the other side as well. So what we're gonna do is make a little bit of a cartoony kind of look. So I'm just gonna make the eyes bigger. So I start by taking the snake hook on the left. You could use any of these brushes, but I like snake hook because it's very precise and it allows you to kind of rotate and curve. So I'm just gonna expand the eyes. I'm just clicking and dragging down. And so you could click and pull and then smooth out, pull a little bit bigger.
Okay, so now we have these really wild looking eyes and they should be really big. And so now I'm gonna make the nose kind of small and doll-like and I'm gonna make the lips kind of like almost like an animal, like kind of like a, like a cat. <laughs> bring this lower lip down and then bring this upper lip up. Okay, so now we have this kind of like funky, cute face. We're gonna go export and export as FBX. I'm gonna save it. Save it as a doll. And I'm gonna go back into Lens Studio. And in order to update that face morph, um, which is right here, I'm gonna click on this mesh. And so what you wanna do is go over here in, in this area. So if you've got lost, just go back to click on face mesh example, head binding, open up that arrow and then click on face mesh right here where it says edit blend shape and then right click on face mesh and select it that way. So again, just if you don't have a right click, you could just go control on the laptop and then click on this square here, select. And here is where you're gonna pull in your project, your uh, 3D object. So you're gonna click this plus sign up here, go to from files, then you're gonna open up the, pro the file that you just made and just click import. Don't worry about anything else. And now opening up this arrow, we should pull down that, drop down that, and then you could load your face mesh three. And so now you could see this kind of crazy character that we just created. Oh my God. And so that is how you use the face morph. And so now if you wanna get even more dramatic with this scene of a character, you could add things like face stretching or face liquidify. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a face stretch. So going up here on the plus sign, we're gonna to go to face effects and go to face stretch. So now you can see this new effect drop down. And so the way we adjust this is these dots here. You could click and you could move them and it'll adjust the certain points on the face. And so we have, we're kind of looking a little bit like a Persian cat right now. One of those cats with that squishy face. Okay. And I'm just raise this, no. Okay, very cute, super cute. And so now what we're gonna do is click the plus sign and we're gonna go to liquidify and you're gonna see the another type of way to modify. So now liquidify, what it does is it makes these circles and you adjust with these circles and each circle has its own settings. So the circle right now is set to a radius and intensity of two and two. And so as you can see, if we raise up the intensity here, it makes this, the circle a lot larger and the area that it covers a lot larger. The intensity can actually be brought down to reverse the liquidify to make things smaller. So if it goes under one, like if it's one, it's not being adjusted. And if it's under one, it's being made smaller. So we can make it bigger or smaller. So let's do two, two, and let's do three, three. That looks so crazy. All right, let's do one or two. Maybe just two. Two and two. And you could actually also adjust the scale so it affects up a smaller area or a larger area. You could, you can change that to point 0.9. And so now I look like a very strange alien. Um, but you could take this and you could actually add another one by just clicking on it and duplicating it. And then going over here in scene and dragging it wherever you want to adjust next. So let's say we want to put it on the nose and give it like a cute big nose or a cute small nose and up the intensity or make it small like that. And so now we have a creature with many different features that we've added to. So now we have a liquidify, we have face stretch and face morphing. So usually when I create characters, I create a mixture of all of these things from face stretching to face morphing to liquidifying to just adjust it to be uh, something that I'm excited about. Um, I like to create things like aliens and cute characters and little dolls and stuff like that. So this is a really key template for me. You could also adjust this area too. This is something I didn't wanna leave out. So going back up to the face mesh example, you could click on this and when you see mesh, you just click select. And now you can see that some of these things are turned on. So if it's checked off, that means that it's cut out. And so if it's checked on, that means that it's not cut out. You can see like you could keep the eye corners cut out or not. And so yeah, that's just another fun thing you could do. You could also expression multiply. 
So, ah, whoa. So with expression multiply, you can get really dramatic expressions for your characters. So if you're doing an expressify style filter, like where you want the face to have like really dramatic smiles or laughs or eyebrow raises, you could use the expression multiplier to enhance that. That's what I meant, not magnify, multiplier. Yeah, so this is on one, and then this would be on four. So those are some keys for making a character filter in Lens Studio. And I hope you had fun with this and I can't wait to see the characters you create. This is my favorite feature inside the program. I have so much fun with this. It's essential for making characters and I think you're going to have such a great time using this feature.